So I just worked the Formula One races for McLaren. Um, and it was just really intriguing because, you know, I guess it's like a high level event or whatever. It's based in America and, you know, it's a Grand Prix, like all these racing things. So I didn't realize how big all this racing stuff was. Um, but I guess that's the same with any sport. Like to me, football is big, baseball is big. Racing apparently is really big. So all these people came from everywhere around the world. I met people from Germany and the Netherlands and Austria and Australia and Hungary and, you know, just places in India. Like it was, it was pretty huge. Um, and I was serving and that kind of thing. And the company that was in charge of like the catering and that, you know, they had a bunch of like Europeans working. The culture class was so heavy. It's just, it's very different. I had asked a father, or at least was in, you know, wondering about why all of Europe, you know, in this map concerning the flooding of the world was going to go under. Because this map is literally reflecting like the new uh, shorelines and that kind of thing um, concerning the flood that they're predicting is going to happen. And so with this flood, not all of America went down. Um, I would say like most of America survived. I would say most of Africa survived. Um, but a lot of, from what I remember, a lot of Asia didn't survive. I would say about half of it didn't, but like all of Europe was gone. Like all of it, almost all of it. There was a very small portion of it. And I was just wondering why, because I'm like, it seems like they're pretty chill. You know, there's some Christianity here and there. Um, they've got all these great things like free health care all over the place. Um, but I think concerning these Europeans, you know, that culture clash is possibly coming from uh, a lack of moral foundation, in a sense. I don't know. It was very confusing because, you know, these people, they... They are very vain, it seems like to me, like very appearance oriented. You know, one of the girls was upset because I wanted to take these glasses out um, because you had some girls that were supposed to be polishing these glasses and they were eating dessert instead of polishing them. And I like, even though it wasn't my job, I specifically brought them back there for them to wash and polish because there were people on the floor asking for water. And so, you know, the girl gets very upset because I'm trying to take out these glasses without polishing them. And I'm like, these people are thirsty. And I'm looking over, homegirls are eating like dessert and that kind of thing. I'm like, you're more concerned about the appearance of these glasses than satisfying these people out here that need water. Which said a lot to me, you know, it's like, okay, how much are we concerned about the appearance of things and not what it actually is, you know? Because these people paid like $5,000 to be in these suites. like at least $5,000 to be in the suite because they had to pay for the suite and then they had to pay for the catering and that. And so I'm just like, we need to satisfy these customers first before you worry about whether there's a freaking dot of water on the glass, you know? And so it just showed me just the surface level, the vanity of their culture that is deeply ingrained. Um, on top of that, just very rude attitudes and like, they had no qualms about lying. Like, I could tell they were lying. Like, I went in to ask for a broom for one place. And, you know, I didn't plan on using it for more than 30 minutes. And they hadn't even cleaned out their area yet. So, I'm like, they're probably not going to even get to this broom for another hour type deal. Um, and they're like, oh, no, no, we don't have a broom. And I see it, like, right there. And I'm like, oh, what's that? Oh, there it is. And I'm like, you knew the broom was there the whole time. And you're just trying to front so you can keep the broom. So, you know, it's these kinds of things that they just almost do um, on purpose or like it's a behavioral type deal like, and they don't care. And you can see the smirk and the deception on their faces and everything, like they don't care. Um, and so if, you know, all of Europe is like that, like I can totally see why it would go under, you know, because you don't have that moral foundation. I don't know what they're living off of, but a lot of them seem very drained and very tired and it seemed like they worked hard or not smart, you know, because you would kind of make suggestions to them and they would be very easily offended. <laughs> like I told one of the guys where this particular glass went and he like slammed the glass in there and then walked off. And I was just like, what is wrong with these people? And it was just, it was so weird. But you know, the whole thing about all the races and, and, and this kind of thing, it just, it was intriguing to me. Um, just because all I could think was all this is going to be destroyed. Like, they, they have introduced this culture to Europe and this culture all around the world, and it's all concerning business and just things that don't even matter, you know? People are worshiping mammon over God. And so, it's, it's a little sad because they think that they're doing the right thing in some kind of sense. They're just all a part of the game and that kind of thing. And 
you know, these people were so upset because I think Claire had gotten like six or something and they probably betted all this money um, uh, to win and they didn't win and unfortunately, um, you know, you could feel the atmosphere in the room change. So, it's all just very surface level to me. It felt very surface level and I'm sure to God it's very surface level as well because it doesn't matter. Um, but they put it up on the pedestal like it does matter. One guy's like, what is this black girl doing in here? And then he talked about some other black guy that was in there. And another guy, he was upset because I didn't hear what he said concerning um, him wanting sparkling water and not still water. And, you know, it was just, is it worth it? But, you know, also those kinds of people um, where they struggle with maintaining their patience or bridling their tongue, they're already on their deathbed, really. That's why they're acting like that. Um, there's already a spirit of like vanity and, and pride there anyway, you know, and so I said okay And I just kind of walked away and didn't pay too much attention to him anymore because it's like to me if you're like that You're already on the lower level even though you think you're on the high level Other than that it was it was really simple and most customers were nice, but you could see You could see the brokenness in them and um, you know a lot of it just seemed like a huge business interaction like everybody was just about business and you can kind of feel the fear, like the validation seeking, and, and that's, uh, oh, do you want a glass of water? And one person will say no, and they all would say no, even if they wanted a glass of water. It just seemed like such a huge amount of slavery that I'm like, man, these people are not free. Like, they're entangled in the validation of man, the approval of man, they're entangled in the love of money and the love of um, status and these kinds of things. And you can never find satisfaction out of that. It's just really, really sad. So. No, I guess I could see totally why Europe would go under because I mean, these people obviously aren't seeking after God and even spending like I spent six hours in Spain one time um, it was just crazy because they were going around the city and they were carrying this fake Mary um, and they think this is the legit thing but it's so ingrained in their society that they don't know any better I mean this these areas are ruled by the Catholic Church and if you don't do what they say, you might get killed type deal, you know, because the mafia is deep in some of these places. It's just real sad. Um, so I do have to thank God for America because there is that mo mobility, I guess, um, where you're not usually killed because of your religion. So, um, and don't get me wrong, it doesn't mean that I think that other religions are right. I don't. I know the Father is the way, but at the end of the day, like, to kill somebody because of their religion, like, the father would definitely offer a hand to them first before ever doing something like that, you know? Um, you know, there was a lady that was recently killed, I think, in Iran because a little bit of her body was exposed on accident uh, under her burqa. You know, that's, I mean, that's excessive. It's no longer about that. It's like, it's about control at that point. So, unfortunately, people can use a manner of things to control other people, but... We are in such a, a dark place that people don't understand what's right or wrong. And, and that's what the Father is for. Like, He wants to bring us out of these dark places. Um, but when you're blinded by vanity and, and greed and love and money and uh, over religiosity, I guess is what you can call it, because the Messiah had told the Pharisees what good religion was, um, then you can't make room for God, unfortunately. And you can't make room for people. So, anyway, you guys be blessed and. Guard your hearts, for sure. Definitely guard your hearts. Have a good one. Bye.